I humbly come to us this morning thanking God for who He is and um, what He has done in my life and through me over the years past. Thank God for friends. Thank God for Roy who could be here in this morning service as I bring this uh, message. I value the friendship that we have had together for a long time as He said. And I thank God for what he continues doing even in the years to come as we share the fellowship together with his family. I thank God for the community of friends who are here. Thank you for those friends who have come from my congregation here at Lakeshore, including, of course, Beggy and Glenn, Marlon, Bob. Thank you so much for being here. I have also a Kenyan friend, Reverend Arthur Toro from Kenya. Thank you, my friend, for being here. Please allow me to say thank you to Wesley Biblical Seminary for having molded me to be the kind of a man that I am today. Jane and I and the whole family will always be grateful for this place. After being involved in the ministry for more than 15 years, we needed a place that would be a place to nurture our spiritual lives. A place that we would be away from the ministry for a while and equip ourselves better. And Wesley Pippigal Seminary has been such a place. Our professors, thank you very much for having us in your classes and molding us. My fellow students, I've enjoyed the fellowship that we've had. And as the Lord continues giving us a chance to be together in this place, we will seek to know more of Him every day. My friends, I have a testimony this morning. Several years ago, when I was just 12 years old, I went to a camp. And as I sat in that camp, of course it was under a tree because there was no building that could take many people during that time. And as a young boy, I sat down. And I was told there was a missionary coming to speak on that camp meeting. And he showed up, a white man. He was the only white man among over 500 Africans. Obviously, I knew that he could not speak in my language, being a white man from America. But as I sat down, it came for his time to bring the word. He stood, he said, let's pray. And he prayed in my language. He preached in my language. I said, if this white man can come to my country, learn my language, then obviously what he has to say is true. That alone spoke to me, but as he went into the word of God, God started conflicting me. Yes, I had, been born, I had been born in a Christian family, but that did not change me. But I, at that point, I accepted Christ as my personal Savior. And God called me into His ministry. I see in the lives of Elijah and Elisha, in the land of Israel, when the nation had been divided, and there was the northern and the southern kingdoms, in the southern kingdom, God calls two men, Elijah and Elisha. And it was a time of drought. It was a time of famine. It was a time of turmoil. It was a time of several things going on 
in the nation. And God calls these servants to serve at that particular time. In the book of 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 19, we see the calling of Elisha. And we see Elisha handing over the mantle to him. And he finds Elisha busy doing something. It could have been something for the family. But as soon as that calling comes to Elisha, he responds. He leaves everything that he has and he starts following. He starts changing his direction. He starts leaving the business that he was doing. Why? Because the Lord God had called him. As you get into the book of 2 Kings, you see God dealing with Elisha. But the calling of Elisha reminds me of the calling of other people in the Old Testament who were found doing something, but as soon as they got the call of God, they started following him. Look at Moses. He was found caring for the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro. David, he was tending the sheep for his father. Peter, of course, was a fisherman. Paul, he was in his own business of tent making. My friends, God calls. And when he calls, we must respond to his calling. I believe you are seated today in this chapel because at one time God called you to respond to Him. And if you are here and you have never responded to His calling, you better do it. I am glad that He found me many years ago. I am glad that He is not through with me. He still continues molding me and making me what He wants me to be. He calls us into His service. He has caused me to be part of his business that he does in this world. To walk with him. And to follow him and to listen to what he has for me. I remember and I look back in my own denomination, Africa Gospel Church. When the first missionaries came and they started evangelizing. And there was this man, Reverend Joanna Nyetich. He received this message. And he started inventing a way in which he could reach the communities around to give them this message. And he found the trumpets. My friend knows. And using that trumpet, he started preaching the gospel. And what an amazing thing that through the messages and the time that God used this man, today we can talk of 1,500 congregations within Africa Gospel Church. That is only one denomination. Because God has used someone to do something for him. What are the qualities that God requires of us if we are to be his servants? Well, there are so many qualities. But allow me just to share a few about Elisha. You know very well in chapter 2, of 2 Kings chapter um, chapter 2. If you read in chapter 2, you see Elijah and Elisha. And we see that Elijah is soon going to be captured, taken away from the earth. And Elisha is following him. He really wants to know what is happening. He was going to be his successor in ministry. And Elijah is being called from one place to to place. He is urging Elijah to stay behind. And Elisha is saying, no, I am going with you. I must follow you. I will follow you. Wherever place you go. We should not also forget... People were around laughing at him, mocking Elisha. You know very soon your master is going to be captured, taken away. Elisha says, I know, I am aware. Please be quiet. I am not leaving him. 
It was a typical time, as I said, a time when the people around in the nation were worshipping idols. It was a time of famine. It was a time of drought. It was a time of political turmoil, issues going on in the land. And God calls Elijah to succeed Elijah. It was a difficult time. Yet Elijah commits himself to follow Elijah. And he sees him and he says, I admire the spirit that is in Elijah. And he goes ahead and he makes a request. Oh, I need the spirit that is in this man. I want his spirit. And he says, he does not only want it in one portion. He says, I need a double portion of your spirit. He had mad. He had seen it. That spirit had made a difference in the life of Elijah. And he knows very soon Elijah is going to be taken away and he's going to succeed him. And he says, This is the kind of a spirit that I want in me when this man is, when this man is taken away. And I don't want it just in one portion, double portion. What a commitment that Elijah had. My friends, it takes a commitment to serve God. It takes a commitment that we will surrender ourselves to His calling, that we will surrender ourselves to His service and say, I will follow you wherever you lead me to go. I will listen to you and wherever you lead me, you will provide, you will make a way for me. Yes, struggles will be there. But God, who calls us, will be with us to guide us and to help us. Elisha trusted God, even at that situation. And the time comes when Elijah is taken away. And Elijah is there looking at his master. And he is taken away. And he says, I will wait for his spirit to fall on me. And the mantle was there on him. And he starts going into the ministry. He starts serving God. He starts doing miracles. He starts going to places. It was not easy for him. People started laughing at him. Mocking him. Making fun of him. He didn't have any hair. They laughed at him. As you read, what a blessed thing that Elisha had. He had a commitment. And he decided to have the spirit that was in Elijah. I pray that in our presence in this place, that God who has called us to follow him and to serve him, that we will ask him to give us his spirit to serve him. That we will trust him to lead us as soon as we leave this place. That we will listen to his leading as he guides us. I've been taking a class in the, to do with the early church. And I think this is a good time for me to finish my studies at Wesley Biblical Seminary with that going back to the early church. And you know very well that the qualities that were needed for servants to serve, even those who were serving temples, they were needed to have the Spirit of God. There were men who were required to be full of the Spirit, even ministering serving temples. How much more do we need the Spirit of God at this time? The mantle of leadership is on us. I know that mantle of leadership is coming to me on the 19th of May. To all of us, a time will come that we will soon be out of this place. Elijah was taken away. Elijah, Elijah was looking at Elijah being taken away. My friends, the library is soon going to be far away from us. 
Our dear professors are not going to be so close to us as we leave this place. We will need the presence of God to guide us and to be with us. I speak to you. You need the presence of God. I speak to myself. I need the presence of God to go with me. Secondly, we need men and women that God can use. Men who have the word of God. At a time of turmoil and hardships and struggles. And the nation was in trouble. And the kings came around and talking and debating and asking themselves where the help was going to come from. As you will read, there were three kings in, the, in chapter 3, verse 11 and 12. Three kings coming together and asking themselves what is going to happen to us. One king, Jehoshaphat, he makes a question. Is there no prophet of God in this land? And someone says, there is Elisha. Elisha is there. And Jehoshaphat as the king, he says, call him. He has the word of God. He has the word of God. This is Elisha being recognized by the leaders of the nation. This is a a nationwide ministry that Elisha is doing. And the door is opened wide for him to minister in such a big way. And Jehoshaphat says, call Elisha because he has the word of God. My friends, the world that we live in today is tired of many channels, many voices, many different words. The, the world that we live in today needs the word of God. We live in a world that is gripped with a spirit of fear, false worship, idolatry, hopelessness everywhere, violence, lawlessness, Everywhere. You open any channel, you see chaos. Problems going on in the world. Different words being spoken. Different people saying different things. Who will stand in the present world, in this generation, to bring up the word of God? It is us. It is us. That we can stand regardless of what is happening in the world. And say, yes, Turmoils are there, conflicts are there, strifes are there, pain, pressure, everywhere surrounding us. But we will start and say, this is the word of God that he has given to us. That sets the prisoner free. This is the word that sets the captives free. This is the word that gives freedom to those who need it. This is the word of God that gives life to those who need it. This is the word of God that feeds our souls when we are in trouble. This is the word of God that comforts us when we need comfort. It makes a difference, my friends. The world is dying. The world is listening to different voices. The world needs to listen to the word of God. We must hear the strong testimony that is coming from the Word of God. We must take this message to the world. The Grand Commission is there. Go he into the world and preach the gospel. Make disciples. And as we shall be going, doing all these things, we will be making disciples. And have the people know the word of God and what God has for them. But you know, we will not be able to say, Thus says the Lord, if he has not spoken to us. We will not be able to say, Thus says the Lord, if he has not spoken to you. If he has not spoken to me, I will not have any courage to say, Thus says the Lord. 
this word has to richly dwell in us. Someone said, have this word richly dwell in you, that if you are to be scratched, you would bleed the Bible. You would bleed it. May God help me that I will stand by this word and share it to those who are perishing in sin. In the life of Elisha, he was a holy man of God. Holiness was in him. You remember the Shunammite lady. When she went to her husband and said, Oh, you notice this man who normally comes by our home? He is a holy man of God. He is a holy man of God. We need to make a room for him so that any time he passes here, he can have a place to stay with us. Holiness in the life of Elisha was transparent. Holiness that was able to be seen. There is a temptation, there is a tendency to be at an institution like Wesley Biblical Seminary and other institutions and have a mental holiness that does not really make any difference in the hearts. And we can stand saying that we know it all. We know about sanctification. We know it with all the terms. Second grace, second work of grace, everything as you can say. But it is something but a mental thing. Can we have it make a difference in our hearts and show it to the dying world? Can we have it make a difference in this time than ever before? When the world needs it more than yesterday. Holiness in the life of Elisha was transparent. This lady could see it. And she calls her husband. And she says, notice, there is something different in this man. There is holiness in him. There is something that is in him that needs to stay with us in our home. We need to have this man always whenever he comes in our home. Let's make another room in our home for this man. My friends, the message of holiness is needed in the world. Holiness, we cannot put it in a box and just put it there to stay. We need to take it to the world. Can we do that? Can I speak to myself? That's the message that will make a difference in the years to come. Not only does God use a man who is committed, full with the Spirit, who knows the Word of God, who is holy, God uses a man and a woman of prayer. Elisha was a man of prayer. He prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. We can only stand in the cup. We can only stand firm and say we know that we serve the risen Savior. We know that we want the world to believe in Him and to know Him. We have to intercede in prayer for the world. We will win the battle on our knees. We will take the burdens of the world to the Lord in prayer. We will go to Him and ask Him in prayer to help us. I know. I've been involved in the ministry before, probably longer than most of you. There will be times of discouragement. There will be times that you will feel like you are doing nothing. There will be times that you feel 
you're dry. There will be times that you feel God has deserted you. He has left you. But don't you forget to pray. Don't you forget to ask God to come help you. That is the only thing that made a difference in the life of Elisha. As his master had been taken away, he prayed to the Lord to help him. Knowing very well that he was surrounded by issues that were going on in the nation, he trusted God fully and he prayed to him for his help. That is what I need. That is what you need. That is what we all need in this life. Men and women of prayer. Men and women who know the one that they serve. Men and women who can go on their knees and say, God, use us the way you want us to serve. Lead us in the ways that you want us to go. Open doors for us. Are we those men and women that God can use in this century? Are we listening to His leading even as we get prepared to leave this place? If I can speak to my friends, the seniors who are soon leaving this place. It may be so comfortable to be in this such a place and forget to pray because we are living or staying in a safe environment. But the world can be very harsh. The world is full of challenges that may soon face us. I know it. I've been there before. And I'm going back to it. The only person who can help us is the one who called us. The only person who can make a difference with us, using us, is Him who called us. And I am glad He called me. And I am glad I can save Him. I can serve Him. Let's pray.